Hi, this is Mrs. Moslick, Geometry Notes 9-1. Make sure you have a pencil, red pen, blue pen, calculator, and a straight edge or ruler for these notes. We're going to solve example one using the quadratic formula. We're going to solve. So set everything equal to zero. So zero equals 8x squared minus 18x minus 5. Identify the a, which is 8, that's the coefficient of the x squared. b is the coefficient of your x term, which is negative 18. And c is the last number, which is negative 5. Write down the formula. x equals negative b plus or minus square root of the quantity b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Then rewrite the equation with parentheses. So negative parentheses plus or minus square root of the quantity, parentheses squared, minus 4 times parentheses times parentheses, all over 2 times parentheses. Replace your b with negative 18 in both places, the a's with negative, oh, positive 8, and your c with negative 5. So simplifying this equation, x equals 18 plus or minus the discriminant or the number inside the square root is 484 all over 16. So break this up. Um, what we have is 18 plus or minus 22 over 16. So x either equals 18 plus 22 over 16 or x equals 18 minus 22 over 16. So let's simplify the left equation. So x equals 40 over 16. Reduce, so we get x equals 5 halves. And over on the right side, we have x equals 18 minus 22, which is negative 4 over 16, which is negative 1 fourth. Now go ahead and uh, pause this and go ahead and try example 2 by yourselves. So number two, you should have gotten five halves and four thirds. And you can check your work. Let's look at number three. Describe the following reflection. This is a reflection over the y-axis. The short terminology for that is little r sub y-axis. So you can write it like that, or you can write it as using the word reflection over the y-axis. Part B is a reflection over the line y equals negative x. If you draw in that line, you see that y equals negative x. Fine. So you can write this down as a reflection over the line y equals negative x, or you can just use a simple notation. So, uh, lowercase r sub y equals negative x. We're going to graph the pre-image and we are going to figure out an equation or a rule for a reflection of an image across the x-axis. So go ahead and plot these points starting at over 1 up 9. I'm just going to graph it green. You might want to do that in, um, in your pencil. Then let's go ahead and take our red pen and plot these next points negative 1, negative 9. Um, it would be 2 comma negative 4 for reflecting over the x-axis. And you can finish graphing those points. So we can see the pattern relating this is that we have the same x-coordinate or x-value, but the y-value is the opposite. So we can write down the opposite y-value. So the rule would be if I take any coordinate point x comma y, the x would stay the same, but the y we would take the opposite of it. So let's now look at this next part. A student offered the following description of reflections over the x-axis. Is her description accurate? Since I'm reflecting the shape over the x-axis, the x values must change signs. No, that's not true because we just saw the rule where the y value must take the opposite. So y value must be the opposite, must be 
the opposite. We're on example two now. We're going to plot the pre-image points. Again, I'll do it in green, but you can do it with your pencil. So start with negative three, comma, negative four. You want to make sure you're labeling it as A and keep doing that. So now we have all of those three points graphed. Now with your red pen with the reflection image, uh, this three, negative three comma four would go to three comma negative four. And that's reflecting over the Y axis. So we'll call that A prime. Make sure you're labeling it on your graph. And we get three comma negative four. And we'll do the next ones, finish those off. So we see that the pattern is that we have opposite x values. But the y values are the same. So if I take any coordinate point, x comma y, then the y value will stay the same, but the x is the opposite. And we can start with now E, we're going to take a pre-image. So with your pencil, you can plot those points. And then with your red pen, think about what that reflection image over the y-axis will look like. So we see that the reflection is the same picture, but A prime is now where C was, and C prime is where A was. Make sure you label those points. Number three, A, we want to draw the graph of y equals x. Start at the origin and go up one over one, up one over one, etc. Draw a line. Then draw the pre-image in your pencil, so negative four comma negative one. Label that A and go ahead and graph the pre-image. So triangle ABC was drawn. Now we're going to graph the reflection. So A prime will be reflect over the graph and it looks like it would go like about here. I'm going to use my red pen for the reflection and that's A prime. If I count the coordinate points, it looks like negative one, negative four. So when I'm looking at the X and Y coordinates, they've just re reversed. So B prime would be five, negative two. Let's see if that looks right. Over five, one, two, three, four, five down to, that would be B prime, and then C prime would look like uh, 8 comma 3, so go over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, up 1, 2, 3, and it sure looks like that pattern works. So the pattern would be we're going to switch the X and Y, and the rule is if I start with x, y, then it's going to get mapped to a y comma x. Make sure that your graph is fully drawn. And then let's go on to investigation 4a. So we're going to draw the line y equals negative x. So that starts at the origin, but we're going to go up one over to the left by one, etc. Go ahead and graph the pre-image points A, B, C, and D. And then we'll look at what the reflection looks like. If it's over the line Y equals negative X, we've drawn that line. A seems like it stays right at A and A prime. And so we are looking at, that looks like it's negative 8, 8. It's the same point. B looks like it would be mapped over like this way. So it looks like I would go maybe negative three comma eight. So maybe we're re, um, switching X and Y's. One, two, three, up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that would be at B prime. And C prime would be, if I'm using that rule, switch the X and Y values, but take the opposite. So four comma two. So let's see if that works. Over one, two, three, four, up two. And that's C prime. Yep, that looks like it's a good reflection over that line. And then D would be the same as negative 2, 2, because we're switching X and Y, but taking the opposites of them. So we're switching X and Y, 
And then we're going to take opposites of them and take the opposites. So the rule would be switch X and Y and then take the opposites of them. Let's just summarize the next few slides. So we look at where P prime is going and it's just flipped over the X axis. So we look at a rule for that and the X stays so x stays the same, but we're taking the opposite of y. Again, start with point four one. When you want to find out a rule, one, two, three, four, for any transformation, just start with point four one. Where does that go? So over the y-axis, p prime would go to negative four one. So this rule is I'm taking the opposite of x and I'm keeping the y the same. Our third rule is you want to start with the line y equals x and the point 4 comma 1. And that point p reflected over the x-axis looks like it's going up to 4 comma, sorry, 1 comma 4. So the rule there would be I'm taking the x and y values and I'm switching them. Our last rule that we talked about in this section is looking at where p goes from the line y equals negative x. And if you just draw a quick sketch of that, draw a perpendicular line segment and just see where p prime would go. And it looks like p prime goes to negative 1 comma negative 4. So let's think about what this rule is. I'm starting with 4, 1 and I'm switching x and y and I'm taking the opposite of them.